they're out of it. And they're hoping that if Cruz wins, some of the, they'll have policy positions again in the, in the Cruz administration. So they're telling him to attack Russia. They think that Ronald Reagan's alive again and that we're at war with Russia. Then a caller says, no, that's not it. It's because he's Cuban, and Cubans have a distrust of Russia because of the communism. I said, wow, that's, uh, that's rigid thinking. Maybe he should live in the, in the, in the present world. I was surprised that uh, Trump liked Putin so much, incidentally. I was very pleasantly surprised at that because it makes good sense to me. I'm a pragmatist. Why should I hate Russia? Tell me why I should copy Barack Obama's insane hatred uh, of Putin. Tell me why I should follow that stupidity. So now you're telling me that Cruz is smart because he agrees with Obama in hating Russia and possibly triggering a world war? That's, that makes good sense. That's just what we need. Elect somebody who's going to go to war with Russia in Europe. That's, that's tremendously smart. Where is this strain of idiocy coming from in the so-called conservative movement? Who is feeding this to him? And Rubio has the same, doesn't he? Is Rubio another, another Putin hater? Wow, what idiots. What idiots are out there? They're a natural ally against radical Islam. Putin is loved in America. He's loved more so than Rubio and Cruz put together, incidentally. I, I'm sorry to break the news to you. Yes, but I'll pass the litmus test. If either of them win, I will vote for them over any Democrat. How's that? Does that, does that work for you? You feel better now? M must I worship them at the same time? Must I also worship them? Okay. Let's go to the calls on the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-407-282. Here's a caller from Dallas, KLIF, my new affiliate. It's actually my new old affiliate. I was on KLIF for years. Terry on KLIF. Go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage. Uh, I'm, I'm a radical Christian, and I, I'm disgusted by the fact that somebody would, would use the Lord and they would use that to try to gain points in an election. And that, to me, tells me that, that Ted has no fear of God whatsoever. All right, so here's the issue. Why am I being attacked on Facebook by Christians who say that I have no right to attack Cruz because of his use of religion? I found it offensive. You know what? I think they're, they're just like they're Cruz bots. I mean, they, they, just, they don't want to hear anything that, that uh, comes against them in any way. But you agree that if he is the nominee, you'd vote for him, right? Uh, I would, but I'm more reluctant now than I've ever been. I mean, it's like the more I hear him talk, the less I like about him. Wow. That's amazing. So his over, over, uh, overly uh, disingenuous use of religion is bothering you? You know what? Anybody, I mean, he, I heard him today, and he said, you'll, you'll know a tree by its fruit. And, and his fruit is, is that he's been an, a lawyer and a career politician all his life. So if he wants to quote the Bible, there's, there's a verse that he needs to look in the mirror at himself at. <laughs> well, I didn't like this God thing today. Again, listen to clip 12. Did you hear that one of his victory speech? Let's hear clip 12 on the Savage Nation. God bless the great state of Iowa. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, hold on. As a devout Christian, do you find that believable? You know what? I, I, he sounds like a televangelist. Just using God to, to line his pockets. Why is it for the first time today I feel sound and sane? I feel like after an hour and 45 minutes on the radio, I, I've arrived somewhere in the, in the promised land that there's someone sane out there. You cannot believe the hatred on my, webs, on my Facebook page from people who are attacking where I live, where I earn my PhD, even my dog telling I'm not a conservative because I have a poodle. Did you hear this? <laughs> yes. Hey, Mike, can <laughs> tell you my dream? Yeah. Oh, sure. I'd like to hear a dream, anything but politics. It's not a real dream. This is, this is a dream that I have. I would love to be in a coffee shop and just be in the background and hear you and, you and Trump talk for about an hour. That, to me, would be like the ultimate experience. You know what? I love him for the same reason I love you. You know, you're both strong men, and, and I just I thank you for your show. Well, that is so beautiful. Thank you. So there's a sane man out there who's religious. <laughs> Okay, look, here's my point. I'd like a separation of church and state. It's as simple as that. Please leave religion out of politics. Can we just agree on that? Can we not have any more of this religion in the political race just for a few more months? Or must every time they run now pound the Bible? You know, I, I objected to when Clinton marched around with that overly large Bible given to him by the, the Hollywood people. They made him a Bible, double size of the double cross. That's interesting, the double cross. Back in a minute. 
All right, here are the topics I'm going to be talking about in the next hour. Koch Brothers Network ready to oppose Trump. I mean, we're told by the media that they're uh, the, the Koch brothers, K-O-C-H, are conservatives, but they're opposing Trump. Gee, I wonder which side they're on. Iran warns U.S. We have even more embarrassing footage of your captured sailors. These are the friends of Obama and uh, John Kerry and Hillary Clinton. Sexually transmitted case of Zika virus reported in Dallas County. Sexually transmitted? The unnamed patient reported had sexual contact with another individual who recently returned from a country where the Zika virus is present. So, now that we know that Zika can be transmitted through sex, tell us what we should do, CDC. Well, uh, uh, nothing. Let's do nothing. Let's, let's do nothing because we're all politicians. Zika virus joins list of diseases brought by illegals. Just remember who wrote Immigrants and Epidemics. Just remember who was so angered by what was going on 21 years ago that he went into talk radio because of the censorship of the subject of immigrants and epidemics. It was yours truly, Michael Savage. I tried to publish a book called Immigrants and Epidemics after I had had a successful career writing other health books, along with the dean of the School of Public Health at one of the biggest public health universities and schools in the country. And New York publishers said we won't touch it because it's... It's a political minefield. And now we have the Zika virus. Oh, really? Diseases Without Borders, published by Michael Savage, out next week. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is, yeah, all right. So look, people are arguing over the Iowa caucuses. You've heard us talk about it for two straight hours. As you could tell, I'm a little bored of it. But it would be um, idiotic not to talk about it. I mean, that's all anyone wants to talk about. You're not ready to talk about more fundamentally important issues like the Zika virus, joining the list of immigrants and epidemics, nor all of the other news of the day. So we'll continue to talk about it. And people are commenting on my Facebook page in very interesting ways. Some of them are just fakers and haters. Here's one for example, okay? Let's see. Linda Spindler Hornberger writes, I don't know how anyone could support Cruz after his team was telling voters that Carson is quitting the election and they should vote for him. He's a hypocrite and a liar. He's a typical politician that can't be trusted. That's a fact of reality. In fact, Cruz admitted he did that. So what do you want me to do, change reality now because he won? Isn't it true, Robert? Didn't he admit that he, won that he did that? That he undermined Carson? On, on purpose, then he made believe he didn't. Here's another one from Glenda Wellsworth. Wow, just found out that Ted Cruz's inner circle is stacked with neocon Bush people with connections to all the big banks and Council on Foreign Relations. Nothing changes if nothing changes, Trump 2016. So many of you are going to go on and hope that Trump wins in New Hampshire and all the other uh, primary states. And we'll see what happens. And those of you who don't want Trump to win will continue to bash him. But I truly believe it's the neocons who are supporting Cruz's, and Rubio, by the way, uh, visceral hatred for, for Putin and Russia. They have no idea what they're talking about. Why is Trump able to stand aside from this stupid advice and say Russia is our natural ally against radical Islam? How come he understands this? Now, you don't want me to talk about the Zika virus. But I'll do it tomorrow or the next day. You want me to continue talking about this? Fine. I could talk about movies better. What would you like to talk about? Because here's a question I want to talk about. Leave these lines open because I think this is the germ of the, the, the essence, the wheat germ of today's show. Why does a politician's religion matter to you? This is an important question because religion has become such a big deal in the Caucasian caucus that I think we have to talk about. It didn't matter to the uh, communists 
on the Democrat side, you know Bernie Sanders is not religious. He, he's an atheist, given that all communists are. You know Hillary Clinton has no religion. That's a given. And uh, <clears throat> we then were talking about Marx, Jefferson, and Jesus in, in Iowa. It's an important story because I remember agrarian socialism as a topic in high school, if you can imagine. Would you imagine? Can you imagine in Jamaica High School in New York City? I read about agrarian socialism. Now, what that means is the farmers were basically uh, socialist in their politics in the Midwest, and they have been for a long time for many good reasons. They came through the Great Depression. They came through the Dust Bowl. They didn't trust the big banks. They didn't trust big business. And so they became socialist. And so agrarian socialism in Iowa would explain why uh, Bernie Sanders was so popular. And I thought that's an important point to be made. But since you haven't read it anywhere, I guess you're not ready to talk about agrarian socialism. In the 1910s, 1920s, 1930s, in ways conditioned by Iowa history, it happened. In the 1930s, Iowa farmers joined the radical movement. It was a group of their own creation led by an Iowan, Mui Reno, Muo Reno. You don't even know this history. I do. Iowa socialism has been there in the agricultural world, agrarian socialism. So it is an, it is an anomaly in some ways, and that's why it's talking uh, important. But what happened yesterday, the big story is that Bernie Sanders proves that he can win the election because he probably beat Hillary. If, if she won by a coin toss, it was stacked against him. And I hope to God he wins the primary so that he goes up against Trump and that America can decide once and for all what future it really wants. Does it want to join the past and become a new USSR? Because that's what we'll become. We will descend so rapidly into the dark ages of the USSR, you won't even know what hit you. And uh, that's the choice you're going to have. I'd like to see it as a clear choice so we could finally put this to rest already. You know, I don't believe America is ready for socialism. In fact, I know it's not true. I know that most immigrants don't want socialism because they fled socialism. I'm not talking about the bums who come here to do nothing. I watched the Hispanics working on construction sites, and every one of them is a diehard capitalist. They love to buy a brand new pickup truck. They love to save enough money to buy a small house wherever they can to start a family uh, you know, foundation here in, in the Bay Area. I see it with my own eyes. I don't need anyone to tell me anything. I don't need to read a poll to see reality. They're naturally capitalistic. They're going to go for Trump. They're not going to go for a socialist like Sanders. They'd look at him and laugh. He's not only not an alpha male, uh, Sanders is a, is, a, is a beta male. Not even a beta male, he's a delta male. Sanders is a delta male from the get-go. I love when he talked about winning track meet, suddenly he became macho now. I already have to uh, track meet, Bernie Sanders in a track suit. You talk about a yuck factor. That's like Bob Dole on a treadmill in an undershirt. That cost in the election. Maybe someone will advise Sanders to appear in an undershirt, in a muscle shirt. Maybe that would help him win the election. Maybe, maybe the millennials will go for grandpa. So the issue is religion. Why does a politician's religion matter to you? It doesn't matter to me. Well, it doesn't matter to me. Let me think about it. Does it matter to me? I wouldn't vote for a Muslim, to be honest with you. Not at this time. I, I would not do it. Why do I say a thing like that? Because too many Muslims have committed too many terrorist acts and too many people use Islam as a weapon against us. And I'm not going to cater to them just because I'm supposed to. Aside from that, I don't care what anyone's religion is. I just r rather they keep it to themselves. What about their sexual orientation? Does that matter to you? It should. It really should matter to you. I think we need somebody who's married with family to be president, so maybe we can have morality back in America. You know, are we allowed to talk about that? One thing I didn't hear in this election, we heard a lot about Jesus, but we didn't hear a lot about values. It's easy to say Jesus and thump the Bible and say God, but not say anything about pornography and drugs. You want to talk about cynicism and liars. You can speak generically all you want about God and the Bible, but then say nothing about the realities of what that means. What does that actually mean? It means what? You want family values back? You're hinting that you're Ronald Reagan all over again? Well, then good. Go to the next step and say, when I'm president, I'm going to outlaw pornography. It's not going to become the plague and scourge that it is in America. The pornographers will be put out of business. The drug peddlers will be put in prison for life.